This is the Average Fells Podcast. I hope you got your coffee ready. Let's talk some business. I had a vision of success and where I wanted to be. And I had never, I had never owned my own business. I had never worked for myself. And when I was ready, I told him, you know, I'm sorry I had to leave your company, but I need to start my own, my own dream. Because it's a business. We're a business too. Right. Like, invest in yourself. You know, don't, don't just... I mean, they replaced the refrigerator with, like, one of those fancy coffee makers. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Average Fells Podcast. I'm your host, Zodi Zach, coming to you live all the way from Riverside, California, on another beautiful Monday morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to another episode here, man. Hey, don't forget, drop by the website, www.averagefells.com. You can drop by there, pick up your specialty craft roast coffee. That's right, specialty craft roast coffee with notes of honey, fig, and tobacco. I got a four-ounce bag that's a monthly subscription. We'll send it to your door monthly, four ounces of this craft roast coffee. Or you can get the one-time purchase of a 12-ounce bag, where we'll send that to your door directly this is whole bean coffee specialty craft roast coffee so don't forget it you heard it here first on the average fells podcast and if you're looking for someone to do some uh, photography some product photography maybe some portraits for your website you need to spruce up your website and get that that nonprofit website looking uh, nice and professional let us know we can help you out with that we can uh, we offer a number of different digital uh, media services and photography is one of them so we can help you out with that anyways a uh, great episode for you guys today. I'm excited to be chatting with y'all. Uh, it's just going to be a solo episode today. I haven't done one of these in a while, and I'm excited to kind of get into a solo podcast with you guys. Uh, and typically what we've been doing on Mondays is we've been doing sort of these web marketing chats that I've been having with uh, two of my pals, uh, Mark and Daniel, and they have been joining me um, every other week, and I've been featuring some um, some a conversation with Daniel, I believe, that I had back in October every month, they, every Monday for the past month, right? Um, um, so I wanted to just kind of keep along with that flow. Um, and this, uh, unfortunately, the fellas aren't going to be here this morning. So it's just going to be me. Um, but I have a lot to, ch- to, to talk to you guys about, to kind of catch up on a lot of things. So we rescheduled the the group chat for next Monday. So uh, stick around. Um, listen to us next Monday if you want to catch up with Mark and Daniel. Um, that's uh, two guys that have added a lot of value here to the podcast. So I'm excited to continue that chat with them. But that'll be next Monday, guys. But today I'm going to kind of give you guys a little brief overview of the successes I've been having with what I've been learning from Monday chats and going back and listening to some of the conversation that I had with Daniel. So I've been going back, replaying my own podcast episodes, listening to them and trying to implement some of the things that we chatted about in my own everyday practice and the things that I've been doing to try and uh, build my web traffic and build my web presence, right? And so I'm excited to kind of talk about that today uh, quite a bit with you guys in depth. I got five tips for you guys, all right? We're going to go over five subjects, all right? And I want to start off with uh, I want to start off with Instagram Reels, okay? Uh, right now, Instagram Reels are hot, okay? They are fire right now if you know how to uh, get onto Instagram and start using those Reels. And the reason why I want to say the reason why I say they're fire is because Facebook and Instagram are now competing for influencer talent with TikTok, all right? A lot of users are moving over to TikTok because there's a lot of organic traffic on TikTok. You can blow up really quick on TikTok. Uh, I'm sure you've probably been hearing a lot about uh, a new uh, a new platform called Clubhouse. Um, that's becoming something of a of a wildfire for for influencers as well right now. So I want to share with you guys some of my some of my wins and some of my takeaways from the Monday chats that I've been having on Instagram Reels right now, and that's Facebook and Instagram's response to TikTok um, and trying to keep users more engaged, trying to keep um, them attracted to using our influencers to use the uh, the platform um, more consistently because now there's a whole other platform, right? That's not Facebook and Instagram that they're competing for. So <clears throat> sort of give you guys my little bit of a breakdown right here. So I've been able to really, I've been able to 6X my performance, all right, on my on my Instagram reels, which is really significant. If you're if you're like a nobody like me, you know, I'm just an average fella, <laughs> and um, and I'm trying to make a name out there on the internet for myself um, because I, I don't know, I want I want my own personal financial freedom. I want my own business. I want to be on top of my own little, you know, thing that I created myself. I feel like nothing will fulfill that until I do it for myself. And I think there's a lot of independent entrepreneurs out there in the world that feel the same way. I think there's a lot of people that that have this drive to do something. They don't know what it is. And for me, it became podcasting, right? For me, it was like, I want to just do podcasting and just have my own thing and do my own thing. That's what I want to do. That's everybody's dream, or at least it's my dream. Um, and you know, that's kind of how this show was born. And, uh, this has sort of been documenting my, my way through the internet, um, kind of 
success, I guess. Um, and you guys get to hear it here first in the podcast. You get to hear the strategies that I've been using to sort of uh, increase my influence, use the strategies that I've been using to increase my web presence and my web traffic. You know, and I need that for my website because, you know, I sell coffee on my website. I offer services for my photo business, you know, graphic arts, different things like that. You know, even, you know, we, we I'll, I'll just a whole different like weird niche sort of market is what I'm trying to carve out for myself because these are the things that I really enjoy, right? And so that's kind of why we're getting down to these these tips and tricks, if you will. I don't really call them that because I think they're, they're more than that. They're real life examples of things that work. So, um, <clears throat> so the first one is the Instagram reels, right? I say take advantage of it. If you're trying to get something out there through the internet, take advantage of Instagram reels, do some kind of highlight, right? And I sort of, the, the way I would say, it, the reason why I believe that I 6 x or not that I believe, I know, uh, the six X uh, performance increase, I think is a, is a bit, it's a mixture of all these little things that we've been learning here on the podcast, just kind of thrown up on the internet at one time and seeing what sticks. Right. And so at first it kind of started off with, let me see if I add the music from the library already in Instagram, you know, adding extra features from the platform already. Right. So I, I think that there's a part of the algorithm that it plays with it where you have to include as much as the Instagram platform in your content as possible, whether it be emojis, text, music, okay? And then you have to layer that with your original content, whether that be the video or a picture that you took, right? And so for me, with the uh, with the Instagram Reels, I've been doing a lot of jump cut kind of uh, content and a lot of really, uh, um, I just, I guess like very movement orientated content for the Instagram reel and chopping it up as much as possible. And that's one way that you can do it, right? I've been doing that and I've been adding some background music from the platform and adding some text with emojis on it and posting it. And I've been seeing uh, a six X performance increase. Okay. So if I typically would get 200, 300, uh, views on a reel, now I'm, I'm averaging 1200, 1500 views on a reel on average now. So, you know, you think, think about the. I'm, I'm sorry, even some, one of them I even hit, I think I got close to almost 2000 are, are on, right? And this is not just one, one particular demographic, you know, you can check out my personal account that's happened on there a couple of times on the coffee Instagram for average fellows coffee. It's happened a couple of times on there. Also did a few reels for uh, a church that I volunteer at and, um, this past weekend. And I had, I think I did five reels for them. And of those five, three of them just passed the 900 mark, right? 900 views. So uh, I kind of learned where to put or how to make the content, right? And then figuring out what the hashtags that kind of go along with it and showing the viewers what they want. So product market placement is the idea behind the Instagram reel, right? So you capture the content. Um, I would say mimic something that you would see on TikTok because that's what Instagram is trying to compete with right now. And I think that's really, really popular. After you do that, you want to find those 12, 15 hashtags that are in your demographic or that that content would best serve, right? Um, speaking of churches, I recently, I, this morning, I went to a funeral for um, uh, from one of the members of our church and um, they mentioned something. They said that he was a pillar in our local community. He was a pillar in our local community. And the explanation they gave was that he was of so much service that people, you know, considered him a pillar in the community. Okay. And it's the same thing kind of like with your, how you want to fit your content to the person viewing it. You want to sort of serve that community. You want to serve that hashtag. So if I'm posting stuff about coffee, right. And I'm sending it over to computers, right. Or I'm sending it over to SEO research, hashtag SEO, you know, professionals, I'm sending coffee stuff over there. Chances are that that particular group, that particular market aren't going to be as receptive as hashtag coffee lovers, hashtag coffee junkies, right? So you want to find the best place that, 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 that content is going to best serve that group with the hashtag, right? So that's my first kind of tip for Instagram reels. I six X the performance on them. I'm seeing people travel to my website through, through this content. I'm seeing people click on my profiles through the content and they're starting to follow the funnel. And that's something that we're all trying to get. We're all trying to increase the web traffic, right? So if you can increase the performance of your social media game, um, you could potentially harness that traffic and redirect them right through the link in the bio, link in the bio, link in the bio. I say it all the time, right? Um, or I'll mention something, hey, like I, I'll ship this directly to your door with a question mark or like an emoji at the end, right? And what happens is it, it opens the door to them thinking, where do I go to find this? And then they follow the funnel down. So 
that's a, a strategy I've been using. I've been seeing some success there, guys. So uh, on the personal account, I've been doing a lot more of like karaoke stuff, and I've been able to see the success there. I've been able to see a lot more, uh, you know, 1,200, 1,500 views uh, doing more of the karaoke thing and, and kind of labeling it that way. And the thing is that my personal audience definitely responds to that so i think that has a i think that plays into how that's hitting the the algorithms maybe and sort of catching some a uh, little bit of flight there <laughs> getting those views getting that view count up you know and i've been able to see at least uh you know i, I think a handful of followers from um from posting on my personal account and doing more of those those types that bit of content right um but moving on let's i'm going to kind of get into a, a different subject here i want to bring it over to the youtube uh, the youtube channel on the YouTube, I've been really kind of trying to just determine um, like the three things that I need to be focusing on content, right? And I think that's obviously web solution kind of content, whether it be things about my, my uh, website design or whether it be things, uh, practical tips on like taking photos or making videos, whatever it might be, you know, doing a green screen in the background. Um, and how you can incorporate that to create content for your website. I think that's sort of kind of the area that I've been going to, but this goes back to that whole entire thing I brought up about being a pillar in in, in, in the community, right? So in, on YouTube, you want to kind of, what I've been seeing success in is, or what I've noticed, although, um, you know, I don't have very many followers and I don't have a lot of plays, but the highlights and the, the successes that I do notice that I'm going to double down on or that I have been doubling down on or the, are the pieces of content that serve uh, people looking for answers, right? So right now, I just recently uploaded a, a video about how you can craft a custom button on Canva, which is a free web design tool for average fellows, and how you can take that over to Google Sites and you can embed a code onto that button to then email someone, you know, that users can click on to email you directly, right? An email me button, a custom one is what I made a tutorial for. And now that piece of content is specifically been released onto YouTube to serve a purpose, right? It, it adds value to my brand, web solutions, number one. Number two, it serves a community. It, sh it, sh it shows people that, hey, this is what I'm building my website on and I can help you if you need help. So it serves that community of web solutions. And I'm also trying to increase my audience and my influence. So by creating content around something that might be more universal than Zach personally, like Google Sites and um, how to craft something on Canva. There are more users looking for crafting on Canva or web design Canva or free web design Canva than there are people Googling Zachary, okay? Or Zodi Zach, whatever you wanna say. So the goal has been, how do I make content to serve other markets? And so by incorporating these things like Google Sites and Canva, which are larger audiences than average fellas, and incorporating my name by doing tutorials on YouTube and serving a particular market, those of us who are you know, wanting to get out there and create our own websites, that's the market I'm serving. You know, that's, that's who I am as a person and that's the people I wanna help, right? So if you're out there making your own website and you don't know what to do in your own Google Sites, you can go to my YouTube and there's a different, you know, there's a handful of tricks there that you can do to help kind of, uh, in, you know, boost up your website, make it, you know, make, make it nicer, make it more professional. You know, that's exactly what I've been doing this entire time during COVID. I've just been looking at my website design, looking at professional website designs, looking at um, amateur websites, designs and seeing how I can make small improvements or where I can make improvements, right? That would elevate the website overall. You know, the idea is to eliminate any hurdles from users or potential buyers, right? So you want to sort of overcome these, these problems by continuing to innovate and develop your website, if that makes any sense. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you guys out there building your own websites. Um, Let's move on. So anyways, YouTube, uh, real quick before I move on to the next episode, it's a slow and steady burn. Okay. So the idea and the reason why I'm coming to that, why I've come to that conclusion is because I've, in, I've uploaded videos from a month ago and I can see that on average, they're averaging two, three, four views a day. Okay. And I know for the experienced YouTuber, the experienced influencer, you're probably like, wow, that's not that great. But for those of us who are getting into the business, trying to create something, right? Using our, you know, whatever resources we have currently available to us to sort of break into the business. This has been sort of where I've learned personally, where I've been having success. In, and that's seeing the overall trend over time. Now that I have, you know, three, four months of videos uploaded onto my YouTube channel, 
I can look at over the past three or four months how that video is done. And there's a particular video that I have called, uh, I think it's like Hobby Lobby DIY green screen. And I kind of got came to this conclusion because I, I realized that I was serving a particular market, DIYers that wanted to get a green screen, a simple solution for them to do, you know, a fun project with for YouTube or something. Who knows what it was they're going to use it for. And I created a video that I just put out there for fun. And then I realized what exactly happened. More people were searching for that answer. They're looking for the answer than they are looking for Zach. And I solved that problem for them. Right. And so now they're, they're trying to, they're trying to, you know, on YouTube, people are typing in things all the time, you know, how can I do this and how can I do that? When you think about the relevance of the question that you're trying to answer, that's where you can get these successes, right? Over time. So um, I looked at a video, I have a video on my personal account for a set five tube amp, okay? And I think it's been up for like five, maybe seven years. It has like over 6,000 views on it. And I was realizing, wait a second, I'm the only video on the internet that's solving this problem that people are looking for the set five tube amp, right? And so when people look that up on YouTube to see the performance of it, they want to see somebody testing out the amplifier. It's like me and two other videos. So the idea is it's a slow and steady burn. You want to look at trends. You want to look at um, content that solves a problem really. And that's where I've been having the successes. So I'm looking at YouTube two, three, four years down the line. What is my channel going to look like, right? How many views am I going to have then? If I post a video today, uh, chances are it gets 10 views the first day. Then it gets one view every day after that. Okay. I don't have a very large following on YouTube. That hasn't really been my goal to build a, a following. I mean, eventually it is. The podcast has been my my focus. Building this community here has been my focus. Trying to become a better podcaster, a better a host, provide better value to you guys. You know, I just love podcasting and I wanted to be, I wanted to have a podcast. So this is what we're doing now. Anyways, so we're going to look at that, the slow and steady trends, kind of look at for the content that works on your channel, double down on the content that you think works on your channel and look for the solving, solving, a, a, you know, answering a question that more people, more users might have um, compared to the content that you personally want to create, right? So for me, what am I sacrificing personally as Zach to be doing this podcast? I mean, I'm a creative individual and, you know, my ultimate goal as a, you know, since I was a kid was I wanted to be famous. I, I didn't know where to put that at. I didn't know which direction to sort of put that energy towards and podcasting is kind of giving me that outlet, right? Now I get to do something that serves a community. Now I get to do something that, you know, can potentially, you know, bring me financial freedom in so many years, who knows, you know? So the possibilities are out there. We're just trying to, we're trying to figure out how the internet works and help the average fella, you know, help small businesses, help nonprofits, help independent artists get their, their thing off the ground, right? That's what we're trying to do here. So let's move on. All right. Now we're moving on to the, the, the fourth fourth tip that I have for you guys. And that's Google trends. All right. This is one thing that, uh, Daniel sort of brought up. He talked about living in the Google suite. If you get into Google analytics, you, you know, learning how to use Google analytics, all the way, just, I, I mean, I would, I've been, I've been on YouTube learning as much as I can. I'll put on three hour tutorials on Google analytics, just in the background while I'm cleaning the house just so I can hear something, right? It's just sort of how I, I learn in like this passive mode. I'll put on a podcast about Google Analytics and most people find it boring, but I soak it up. I'll listen to hours of somebody talk about SEO research and keyword research, right? To me, that is what I, my brain is being fed by that. So um, that's what I've been, you know, that's, that's how I learn. I just need to just soak it all up and then throw it out the wall and see what sticks and see how it, you know, worked and then, you know, keep going at it. So Google trends is something I kind of came across learning Google analytics, right? I kind of got introduced to the world of Google and started getting deep into the Google analytics, um, you know, I, um, desk software. And then I moved over into the Google trends where I just started using that, um, to sort of determine what sort of, uh, what content is going to get consistent you know, get, get consistently Googled. Okay. This is a part of your keyword research. And I want to get into another function of Google called Google keyword planner. We'll talk about that last. And these two tools, Google trends, Google keyword planner have been sort of the new focus that I have now. Right. Uh, one of the things that Mark had talked about was he was talking about possibly creating some sort of Python code that would track, uh, trending, um, hashtags on Twitter. Right. And if you happen to be someone who has web solutions and coffee, that's my brand personally, average fellows podcast or web solutions, podcasts and coffee. That's our brand, right? That's, that's all we talk about here on, on average fellows podcast. 
if those three hashtags, web solutions, coffee, and podcasts happen to be trending on the same day and you happen to, you know, be aware that all three were trending, right? You, you built a Python script that could, um, just kind of monitor the internet and tell you when these, when these markets, podcasts, coffee, and web solutions were trending. And then you would then somehow create, craft a piece of content that would fill that void there, right? That would answer the question or that would best serve those markets, right? That's something that he brought up in our discussion that we've been having. And so I wanted to sort of dive into that. And I'm not an experienced Python coder, but I have some experience on it and I haven't finished my class for it, but I, <laughs> I have picked up a Udemy uh, course on that one of the things I've discovered was something called Google trends. And I'm sure, you know, the marketers out there are like, Oh my God, I can't, this guy's such a noob. I am a noob. I'm an average fella. I discovered Google trends and I've been starting to learn how to use it. And one of the things I've discovered is how useful and how phenomenal of a tool Google trends is. Okay. You can look at a particular word, whether it be coffee, and you can look at the past five, six, you know, however, the indefinite amount of time that you want to look at of how that word has trended throughout the year throughout the years, throughout the month, if you want to. And you can see exactly where the peaks are, where there's peak traffic around the word, where there's valleys, where there's not very much traffic around the word, or you can see the consistency in the traffic of the word coffee, right? And that's exactly what I've been able to do. I've been starting to study some of my keywords. What are the keywords in my market? Coffee, web solutions, and po podcasts, right? So that's sort of been the area of influence I'm trying to take some notes on now. Okay, I wanna find this goes back to uh, the conversation that we had with the fellas and Daniel brought it up. He said, you want to find areas that are least contested traffic, but they offer the most, um, the most traffic, right? So if there is a, the word average fellas is not contested on the internet. Okay. Until I came along, I started, you know, producing content under the name average fellas and average fellas podcast. What happened is I, I took over the market I took over that keyword I dominated that keyword so now when you google average fellas nobody else comes up I think I think a movie comes up but besides that I come up only me pages of me comes up under average fellas and average fellas podcast average fella I think I'll be like the third or fourth result on that one so there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a fight going on there in average fella but average fellas that term I dominate so you those are the these are the this is start looking at Google trends and look for niche markets that are associated with you, which for me, it's coffee. For me, it's web solutions. For me, it's podcasts. And then what you want to do is determine, you want to sort of reduce that down to the closest, um, the closest way for you to win the traffic war in that, whatever that word is. Right. And so Google trends has sort of been this amazing tool that I'm able to determine all right, I'm able to determine what those wars are. I'm able to determine what what keywords I should be sort of trying to make content around. I need to rank for. I need to take kind of take over that web real estate. Okay, so Google Trends, check it out, guys. Get on get on your computers and check it out. <clears throat> Moving on from that, Google Keyword Planner. This is a little bit more specific now. Okay, this is looking at the word and looking at the variations of the word and looking at like like-minded markets, I believe. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, how to say that. Um, and so what I've been able to do in Google keyword planner is put in the word coffee and I've been able to sort of select, I've been able to select region, you know, you can put Southern California or you can, you can select California. So there's, there's, there's ways that you can even, you know, you could, you could focus down the search, right? And this works for me as a person who's trying to release content, produce content on the internet. I want to find the least contested, most valuable, most trafficked area on the internet when it comes to coffee podcast web solutions. And it just so happens that not a lot of people in Southern California are doing that. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of people doing podcasts. There's a lot of people offering web solutions and there's a lot of people selling coffee, but there's not very many people doing all of them. Okay. So I have a bit of a advantage here where I can somehow um, tie the two together, tie the three together, vice versa. It doesn't matter in any which way I can split it and start producing content around these three ideas and trying to create a, a bit of a, uh, um, 
I guess a stronghold. I don't know how you want to say it. Like I just, I want to set up shop around these keywords on the internet. Right. And Google keyword planner kind of exposes you to the, the words around the, like the, the related terms to that particular market. So I cannot rank for coffee. This goes back to some of the content I've been putting on YouTube. If you look up the web traffic 102, I believe it is web traffic 102. I talk about the keyword coffee and how I cannot rank for it personally, but I can rank for average fellas coffee. Okay. So there's the difference there. When you look at Google keyword planner, what it'll do is it'll, it'll break down coffee and then it'll give you, if you want to look at it for by region, it'll give you the associated key terms and then it'll also give you the, uh, the, um, the performance of that key term of that keyword. Okay. It'll tell you like, this is Googled 10,000 times a month. This is Googled 1000 times a month. Okay. Something that's Googled a million times a month is probably something you want to rank for, right? Because there's tons of users looking for that key term. It could be highly contested. You don't know. I mean, it just, it just really depends. So or you could be trying to rank for too vague of a term. So it just, it, it just takes, it takes a little bit of kind of messing around with on the Google keyword planner and finding, determining, like I said, those, those battles that you want to fight, those little pieces of real estate that you believe that you can create content or that you can get Google to recognize and rank your content for. Right. And some of the things that I'm going to add, I think that went through the five tips here, but I'm going to add, I'm going to add on a sixth one for you guys, just for some bonus here. Um, I've been writing, I've been working on a blog the entire month of April. Right. And I've been able to, I've been able to get over 150 people to look at my blog in the month of April. Right. I don't know how to blog. I'm just learning things. I'm putting it together. But one thing I've, I've noticed, okay. Is that my blog organic traffic is wild. Okay. It, I, I'm able to capitalize on the funnel, uh, or at least keywords, uh, and, and reach new users through my blog. Okay. And it's, I've, it, this is wild. I'm not a blogger. I don't know how to do this. I'm an average fellow just blogging. All right. I'm just taking a crack at the best practices and I'm checking my Google analytics and I'm watching people follow the funnel through. Okay. So it's, I mean, in the month of April, over 150 people looked at my blog already, you know, and I've never even tried to even like put a blog out there in the world. So, uh, I'm sort of excited for that. I'm, I'm excited to see what that's going to look like in six months. Okay. Because I've been able to see that the, the first blog post that I posted over 50 people viewed it already. And I think I've seen over two people, I think it was like, I think it was like two people, two or three people followed the funnel from the blog to, to the website. Okay. And that's sort of the, when I'm, when I'm tracking on my analytics, I'm looking at people coming from Instagram, I'm looking at people coming from YouTube, looking at people come from Facebook, from LinkedIn, from Google organic search. Um, it could be the two backlinks that I have. I only have two backlinks, <laughs> um, that are not mine. There are other businesses. And, and so it's, you know, so there's a number of things that I'm tracking the performance of, but my blog surprisingly has been able to you know, translate to four, you know, I think it's been four people. Yeah. Four people have followed the funnel from the blog, but over 150, over 150 people have viewed it already. Okay. So that's, I'm building a, a web. Okay. Of, um, of web channels. Right. And all of those are pointing to my own website, my main website, the main hub of where all my content flows out of where I have my coffee, where I have my pitch for all of the, um, the digital, um, the digital, um, media services that I offer as well and where I host my podcast. So there you have it guys. Those are the five trip, <laughs> five trips, <laughs> five tips, uh, that I've been focusing on, um, because of the chat that we've been having on Mondays, guys, we're having these cool chats and we're having these great chats and they've been really, um, helpful to me personally and getting my, my podcast out there, uh, in the world more. Right. And, I, and I'm not necessarily seeing that in podcast downloads, but what I am seeing is an increase in web traffic. What I am seeing is a increase of retention from the people listening, from the people watching, from the people that subscribed. Right. And that's a good thing. That just shows me that we're becoming more valuable. We're becoming more of a pillar in this potential market. Right. And that's uh, that's all I want to do guys. I want to be able to serve this community and, you know, build something for myself in the meantime, and, um, you know, hopefully everybody wins, you know, we're here for the average fellows, small business, nonprofits, independent artists. If you need web help, that's what we're here for guys. Anyways, thank you for listening for, to today's podcast. Uh, a little bit different, a little bit different uh, take on how, how I delivered the information to you guys today. I hope you guys find it valuable. Once again, drop by the website, www.averagefellows.com for your specialty craft roast coffee. That's whole bean coffee. All right. With notes of honey, 
fig, and tobacco. Oof, this stuff is so good, guys. Or if you need a simple web graphic or a website, let us know. Average Fellas Podcast, averagefellas.com. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Take it easy.